Hello my friends, I'm the Itty Bitty Celtic Witch and today as we are almost at the spring equinox, we are here to have a chat about seven simple ways that you can celebrate Ostera and the spring equinox as a witch. So what is Ostera then? Ostera falls at the spring equinox. In the Northern Hemisphere, this falls around March 20th to 21st. Now these dates aren't concrete, they do vary a little bit depending on the year. So it is worth checking out each year which day the equinox actually falls upon. At the equinox, day and night are in equal balance. So after this point of balance at the spring equinox, we are having longer days, which is perfect for the growing season, giving all the vegetables, plants, flowers, time to grow and thrive and soak in that sunlight energy. So traditionally it's a time of hope. We see a lot of different things popping up around the springtime season like flowers returning, birds returning. There's more trees that are green than just evergreens. There's more sunny days. So there's a lot of shifts and changes that occur around the spring equinox that really shift around this idea of hope, new life, and new beginnings. So now let's have a chat about seven simple ways that you can celebrate Ostera as a witch. Now these draw upon my own experiences working with Ostera and celebrating it as a pagan witch throughout the years. So the first one might seem really really obvious but it is always worth reconnecting grounding with the basics. The first tip then is to plant seeds. So the spring equinox this is really the start of the growing season it's when things kick off. In the preceding Sabbath Imolk which falls around the beginning of February in the northern hemisphere things are just sort of starting to show inklings of life and returning to that bright energy, especially in different areas. In my area, things still haven't blossomed and they probably won't for a little while. But that doesn't mean that this is not prime planting season. This is a really good time to plant seeds, both literally and figuratively. Planting seeds literally ties into the pagan roots of this festival as a celebration of the real beginning of the agricultural growing season. And that mindfulness draws upon just how important growing and tending to gardens, both in our more modern sense where we have our back gardens and the traditional sense where a garden might have helped a community survive throughout the winter season. So there's a real mindfulness around the traditions of planting seeds when you are actually just planting seeds yourself at Ostera. It draws upon a lot of the roots and origins of the festival. So while it sounds like a really easy idea, it has has a lot of deep roots and connections to what Ostera and the spring equinox means. Now you can also figuratively plant seeds. So this is more focused around spell crafting, around manifesting, timing even different projects, different creative ventures, whatever you might be working on in your everyday life. Bringing a sort of pagan witchy mindfulness into these everyday things and timing them up with Ostera timing up the planning, really thinking things out. What do you want to thrive throughout the coming growing season? What do you want to spend your energy nurturing and focusing on throughout the coming months? This is a really good moment in time to really consider this, spend some time meditating around it, crafting spells around it, manifesting, and drawing on the natural rhythms of the earth in your everyday magic. So my second tip is is to meditate. Now this can look very different depending on your lifestyle and what meditation means to you. You could be sitting altar side in a very traditional sort of image of what meditation looks like or you could be doing something that is meditative in practice to you. This could be creating or it could be heading outside. One of my 
favorite forms of meditation is actually an outdoor moving walking meditation. It's very grounding as a pagan witch with an earthy practice to mindfully spend that time outside. Now it can look very normal and very ordinary as you're just walking around and checking things out. So it's also very handy if you are in the broom closet and looking for really simple ways you can intertwine this festival into your daily life. Now where it gets extra witchy is where you're walking around and bringing a real awareness to the spring equinox and what that means to your spiritual practice. You could listen to a meditation on your headphones while you're walking along, or you could take some time to really look at the different signs of spring that are popping up around you. For me, in my outdoor walking meditations, they have really been focused on looking at the melting snow. We had a substantial amount of snow this year. There are no real flowers blossoming outside. There are inside with the house plants, but outside they haven't quite blossomed just yet. So my focus around walking and outdoor meditations is really centered around the melting and the thawing. So bring an awareness to what nature looks like for you in your area, what spring looks like for you. And this connects again with the origins of the Sabbath and that celebration of spring in a really simple everyday way. Number three is to get into some creative witchery. So creative witchery is one of my absolute favorite ways to practice witchcraft and magic. I like incorporating a strong mindfulness of nature and my earth-based spirit spirituality into the artwork that I create. So to celebrate Austera then, you can dive into whatever sort of creative expression speaks to springtime energy in your practice. For me, I actually started off by creating a printable because I wanted to include it on my altar space. And I will be actually including this in my Etsy shop if you guys would like to download a copy for your altars as well. For me, this was a way to really connect with the springtime energy. So as I mentioned, there aren't a lot of flowers outside yet. And I really wanted to bring that into my altar space and into the spaces I spend my time. And so for me, a really accessible way to do that was through creative witchery and through digital drawing. So I decided to create a spring flower inspired printable art that I could pop on my altar. Now this might look entirely different in your practice if you are looking to explore creative witchery through painting, through writing, through poetry, through photography, through crafting, knitting, stitching, whatever creative expressions speak to you and you can incorporate a mindful awareness of that springtime energy is absolutely a perfect creative witch expression of Austera and the spring equinox. Now you guys know I absolutely love to pop into the kitchen and weave some kitchen witchery as well. So of course kitchen witchery is another fabulous way that you can celebrate Austera in a very simple everyday way. Now the way that I chose to celebrate Austera and bring that magic into my kitchen this year was through some Austera sugar cookies with maple berry icing and I'll pop that link up above. But 
essentially, as a quick overview, I incorporated maple because this is the maple syrup season. And so it's really an important part of the local nature here. And so I wanted to include some real maple syrup in the kitchen witchcraft I was doing. And then along with maple, I also incorporated some berries as well to bring a real mindfulness of how the seeds planted at Ostera, what is grown and tended to now, can really manifest throughout to the harvest season, throughout the summer solstice, throughout Lunasaw towards Mabon. Now there's a lot of different ways to explore kitchen witchery at Ostera, so let what is inspiring you really be your guide. There are so many different options here and this is simply the way that I chose to work with. Number five is to work with the goddess Ostera. So as well as being the name of the festival and the Sabbath, Ostera is also a goddess who is strongly linked with Ostera the festival. So if you're interested in incorporating deity into your rituals, then working with Ostera can be a great way to do that. Now if you're interested in learning more about her folklore and mythology, then you can check that out through the Magical Info Cards deck I offer over on Etsy, which takes a look at each of the eight Sabbaths throughout the Wheel of the Year with their deities and ritual ideas and different origins of the festivals. And then I also dive further into Ostera's mythology in the Magic of Ostera, which is a magical journey or lesson available over on Patreon. Number six is working with floral scents. So if blossoms quite haven't bloomed yet where you are, then you can always incorporate different floral energy throughout your home. Now you can do this with fresh flowers or with floral essential oils, different floral scents and different fragrances. However you approach working with different floral energies. That's a really lovely way to incorporate hearth magic and springtide energy together throughout the home. And then number seven, because I am a tarot and oracle reader and I absolutely love it, I have to mention pulling some cards. Now doing an austere spread or simply pulling a couple of cards to check in with the energy of the moment, what you are growing, what you are cultivating throughout the coming months, this is a really good time to work with that energy. And if you are hustling about, there's a lot going on in everyday life, recentering with a few cards can be a very grounding way to explore the magic of spring in your practice and ground and reconnect with those intuitive messages. So that is all for our chat about some simple ways that you can celebrate Ostera as a pagan or witch. I would love to hear how you are celebrating Ostera. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please do hit the subscribe button. And that is all for today, my friends. I wish you a most wonderful and magical Ostera and springtime season. So very many blessings.